you, Jesus. Amen. Our God is so good. Amen. I'm going to ask you all to be seated just for a few moments. I'm going to have the worship team stay up here just for a bit because um, we're going to stir up the gifts of the Spirit here tonight. Um, and uh, in order to do that, and we do some prophetic things here tonight, I just want us to, to go back in just a, a short time of worship just to stir up the gifts of the Spirit. Um, I'm gonna, I want to encourage us by a, a couple of scriptures here tonight. I'm going to be reading out of John 10, um, just a few different verses here. And in John 10, Jesus talks about how uh, the shepherd, uh, to him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. The sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. I love this because we know that Jesus is the gate, the door, the watcher, the one who watches. There's only one way, amen? There's not more than one way. There's one way legally that we can access uh, the, the kingdom of God, amen? And he goes on, he says, and when he brings them forth or gathers his own, he goes before them or leads from in front of them. I love this, that God leads in front of us. He's actually shown us the way. What we're doing here right now in church is we're just following the leader. Remember doing that as a kid? Played follow the leader. That's all he's asking us to do. He's not asking to make up stuff. He's not asking to do anything but what he already did, amen? So we wanna make sure we're following the leader tonight. And so in a little bit, we're going to have our prophetic groups come up here, and we're going to spend some time uh, uh, just ministering to anybody that needs ministered to. If that's a lot of people, great. If it's a couple of people, great. We'll just, uh, we'll end then, okay? But I just want to encourage us here. It goes on, it says, he goes before them or leads from the front, and the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. Everybody say they know his voice. Now, the word for know there is actually a word that we, we use for to see. Uh, in John chapter 20, he uses the same word, Ido, E-I-D-O, which, which actually in John 20, he says, and uh, they saw Jesus, or to see him and to know him. And, and it's to see with the heart, to see inwardly. And I think it's, uh, it's kind of ironic because a lot of times we, we, you know, the word know is gnosko or the, the experiential uh, kind of knowing as well. But he uses the word Ido here. They see his voice. It's interesting, isn't it? To see or to know with the heart his voice. It reminds me of, I know a verse in Habakkuk chapter 2 that Pastor Bruce would, would read often. I will stand upon my watch and set, my, uh, set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. I'll watch to see what he says. Now, when you're listening, typically use which organ? The ears, all right? We use the ears to listen with. But he says, I'm going to watch to see. And I want you to understand something here tonight, that the Lord is going to show us some things. He's going to touch our ears and our eyes and whichever faculty it is, amen? But I believe that God wants to show us some things and to see some things and to even to see what he says. And I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that, that uh, he may run that reads it. And we always encourage you to write things down, that there's a, a greater or longer shelf life with words that are written down. And I find words all the time like, oh, I forgot about that word. Because it's written down, I, I, I can remember what the word was, amen? So again, we want to see to know his voice here tonight. And so if you're not going to get prayed for tonight, here's what you're going to do. One of the things you're going to do is you're going to pray. And if you brought a notebook, you're going to write some things down. You're going to record it upon a tablet, all right? Now, if you have an actual uh, tablet, uh, uh, an iPad or a phone, you can record it on that too, all right? Habakkuk just was prophesying things he didn't know about apparently, all right? Digital tablets. But we want you to write some things down because God wants to speak to every one of us. I'm reminded of the story when Jesus met the woman at the well. Do you think Jesus knew he had an appointment? I do. I think he sent his disciples away because he knew from father that he had an appointment at that well with a woman he never met. How did he know? He watched to see what the father would say. I only do what he says to do or shows me to do. Amen? What I hear the father say. My sheep, goes on and says, and my sheep follow him and they know, I do, his voice and they, the stranger, the alien, the enemy, that, that can be translated as, will they not follow, but will flee from him, 
for they do not know, do not see, do not ido, the voice of the stranger or the sound of the stranger. Let me tell you something. The stranger, the enemy, is going to give you a lot of sounds to pick through. There's, a, there's so much noise in this world, and that's what that word means. It's not just his voice, but the sound. He emanates so many sounds to try to confuse us. And if they're not harmonious sounds, it's just a cacophony of noise all around us. The world is filled with noise. And we have got to quiet ourselves within and listen and see the Lord. Amen? This is what we're going to do. Because everybody can prophesy. Look at your neighbor and say, you can prophesy. You can prophesy. Because the Bible says we can. It's the one gift we're allowed to covet and to want to actually engage in. And so it's a gift that we all can at different levels operate in. But we want everybody to become proficient at this. Because God may have an appointment with you and a total stranger. Maybe not at a well. Maybe at a Walmart. But you're going to go places and God's going to give you some. You're going to see the instructions of God. You're going to hear his voice. And he's going to give you just simply something to say. And Jesus asked the woman a question. Remember this in John 4? He says... Uh, go get your husband, or where's your husband? Did he already know the answer? Of course he did. He kind of baited, well, I'm not married. <laughs> you rightly said so, right? You've had five, and you're living with a guy right now. And she famously says what? I perceive you're a prophet. <laughs> he was obviously hearing from God. You can't get that information any other way. And she knew it, but it was so impactful. Now she begins to ask him spiritual questions. And so, I mean, even today I was talking to a guy who's a, a, a follower of Christ, a leader in a church, and his story was uh, he went to a Bible study to prove the Bible wrong. I love those kind of stories. I went to a Bible study, my dad asked me to go, and I went to prove the Bible wrong, and now he's a pastor. It's just fun. It's fun, amen? But because there are faithful people that say, just come with me. That'll just meet you at a well and just tell you something about yourself. You know, it doesn't have to be a a 20-minute prophecy at the well, at the Walmart, in the parking lot, wherever you're at. You know, just a quick little word like, go get your husband. I don't have one. That's right, you don't. And I have information on that. And you share that to get their attention. Did he have her attention? And did she think he actually heard from heaven? And when people think that, they're going to ask you things, inquire of you. Can you tell me how many times people have said, hey, uh, you're, you're kind of good with the man upstairs. I hate it to say it that way, but they, they always come up. You know, you're pretty good with the man upstairs, aren't you? I'd like to think so. We know each other. We've been introduced, right? But what they're saying is, I know that you have a connection that I don't have. Literally, again, just a couple weeks ago, I had a former student reach out to me in a crisis mode. I don't know who else to turn to. I know that you hear God's voice. That's it. I know that you hear God. I know that you can hear from the man upstairs. That's what they say. Listen, I don't care what brings them back, but if they know that you hear from God and they know that you know that you know, and the information I gave him, he gave me a big thank you and said, I knew that coming to you was the right thing to do. It wasn't men's wisdom. It was just godly counsel. And what I said to him on the phone, you ought to have been like, well, duh. That makes a lot of sense. But to a person of the world, they don't have the wisdom of heaven that we have and that we walk in. Amen? And so a single word to a woman at a well got her attention and and opened her heart to receive. Listen, you don't have to ask God for a 20-minute prophecy for somebody. Ask for five seconds. You just need a word of knowledge. You just need some kind of prophetic insight so that you can actually have an open access door to them and to their heart to deposit the kingdom of God. Amen? Tonight we're going to do that. We're going to ask our prophetic teams here to come up shortly. They're going to come up here. We're going to seek the Lord. We're going to stir up the gifts of the Spirit. If you don't come up here, your job, your job is to knock on the door. Your job is to hear from the Lord yourself. You're the one that's going to see, to know the voice of God. I want to see the voice of God activated in my life. So I want to ask that the Lord open our eyes and open our ears to receive from him. Amen? He goes on and says, I 
I am the good shepherd, and I know, gnosko, you know that word from our discipleship too, which means to intimately know, deeply know my sheep, and I am known of my own, or by, the, by my sheep. In other words, I know them intimately, and they know me. There's a connectivity there that is deep and personal and familial, amen? He is our heavenly father after all. What father refuses their children? They come and run and jump on, on, on his lap. He's a good father. Tonight, we're gonna jump on the lap of father and we're gonna see to hear what he's going to tell our hearts, amen? So I want us to just all stand briefly here. I want the prophetic team, if you'd come on up here, if you're on team one, two, three, or four, and they're color-coded as well, just get together. We're going to begin to pray. Everybody at your seats, you're going to do the same thing. We're going to pray, and then I'll call you up here momentarily. You guys are going to start playing a little bit of music here. But before we do, we're going to stir up the gifts, amen? Words of knowledge, words of wisdom, spirits of discernment, the prophetic gift especially, Amen. And at the very least, what's going to happen, if you don't come up here to get ministry, you didn't miss out on anything because you're going to quiet yourself and you're going to seek God yourself and ask him for a word. And he may deposit a woman at the well kind of five-second word in your heart for somebody. Go tell them this. That's it. It may be for somebody in the room. It may be for a family member or a co-worker. It may be for somebody else. That's what we're going to do tonight. Amen? So let's just take a few moments here. I'm just going to start us with prayer. And we're just going to seek the presence of God because what he really wants is for us to know him, to see him, to know him with our hearts, to know him intimately, to know him as a father would his son and a son his father, amen, very closely. My kids can ask me anything they want. They can ask me anything. I might say no, but they're not afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask a father tonight, amen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you as your children. Lord, not even as toddler children, but maybe we come to you, Lord, as children who are maturing in our faith, but we have some questions. And Lord, every one of us here, I know it, every one of us here longs to be used by you and for you in a greater capacity than we are tonight. So tonight we ask for more. Just say more. Lord, we ask for more than what we are currently experiencing in our lives, in our walk with you, in our ministry, Lord Jesus. So tonight we ask for an outpouring of your spirit. Just lift your hands to heaven right now. Father, I just pray right now as we lift our hands that you'd use us as a conduit right now. Just like... With electricity, Lord God, a conduit is necessary to pass the power from one point to another. God, the power from heaven, the the word from God will just come through us and flow through us to proceed forth out of our mouth and then we just simply give what you tell us to give. So Lord Jesus, tonight, we're just going to spend a moment or two here, just a few minutes of just worshiping you worshiping you and stirring up this gift and doing nothing but focusing on you. Don't focus on a word. Focus on the Lord for the next few moments here. Just focus on him. 